name is Stefan Cross. I do communications for GM's Global Connected Customer Experience Group. Um, what that means is we handle the connected car side of things here at GM. Um, and we are here in Sausalito, California for the launch of the new Chevy Volt. I'm gonna take you through some of the new connectivity features of this Chevy Volt here. Um, the Volt does have a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot powered by OnStar 4G LTE. And to access that hotspot, I go to the OnStar icon here on the screen. OnStar ready. I'm in Wi-Fi settings. Wi-Fi settings. Please see the owner's manual. And you'll for see information about your Wi-Fi hotspot settings. You'll see it has a unique Wi-Fi um, SSID, the Wi-Fi name, and password. We made the password Find New Roads for this occasion. You can customize it um, to be whatever you want. So you'll see here, um, if I actually launch the Wi-Fi portion of my phone, I can connect to the vehicle's Wi-Fi hotspot. I'm now connected to the Volt hotspot. And so passengers, kids in the back seat, um, can actually connect their devices, tablets, laptops, you name it, to this built-in Wi-Fi hotspot. And it's gonna get a stronger, more consistent connection than your smartphone that a broad and hotspot would. Thank you, goodbye. So when talking about OnStar 4G LTE Wi-Fi, which gets you connected to your personal devices in the vehicle, that is free for three months when you buy a new vehicle. Um, and after that, there's a range of data plans available for customers. Um, we use AT&T um, as our wireless provider for the Wi-Fi hotspot. So if you have AT&T already, you can add your phone as another device on your mobile shared plan. But if you don't want to do that or you don't have AT&T, you can buy a bundle package of a lot of data and use it over a year time frame. You can buy a daily package if you're just going on a road trip and want to pay $5 for 4G data for the day. So there's a lot of options between monthly, daily, yearly packages um, to really get the type of data and Wi-Fi option that you want for your vehicle. So now that I've got my phone connected to 4G LTE, I actually can plug it into the USB port here. Um, and you'll see this icon up on the infotainment system has changed to Apple CarPlay. So when I launch this, now I've essentially launched Apple CarPlay. And what this does is it takes some of my phone's content that's been approved for use in the vehicle and projects it here on the infotainment system. So the four main components of Apple CarPlay are one, it syncs your contacts and your calendar. So if you get meeting notices, it'll give you notices about when your meeting's coming up, where it might be. Um, it also is gonna sync your phone contacts. Um, shall I help you? So you can see it's got my whole phone book in here. It's got all my recent calls. It allows me to access a keypad only when the vehicle's in park. I can't access this keypad when it's in motion. Um, and your recent voicemails as well. Anytime I need to go home, just click that Siri button or I can click back and it'll take me to the home screen of Apple CarPlay. The next main function of Apple CarPlay is text messages. Obviously, we know texting the vehicle is a big problem in, in cars today. We don't want people picking up their phones and texting while they're driving. So we've worked with Apple to develop a solution that allows them to send the messages they need to in a hands-free, non-distracting way. So you see, if I launch text messages here, Who shall I, text? I can go to show messages and see all my recent contacts, all my recent text messages, but I'm not actually going to be able to see the physical text on here. It's going to be all audible-based texts. So let me text my work phone, for example. Okay, what do you want to say to Chef on Cross? How's the weather in San Francisco today? Question mark. Your message to Chef on Cross says, How's the weather in San Francisco today? Ready to send it? Yes. Done. So in a moment, I should get a text from the vehicle. There we go, oh, let me bring that up. From the Volt, how's the weather in San Francisco today? And if I respond, you'll see what happens when a text comes up. You have a message from Stefan Cross. It says, it's a little cloudy. So you'll see, you reply? you'll never actually see the text message. It'll allow you to audibly dictate it um, and it'll audibly read the text back to you, but you're not going to be able to see a keyboard or anything like that. So we think that's a great solution to help people really curb that desire to text in the vehicle. The next function of Apple CarPlay is a lot of audio-based apps. So you'll see on here we have apps like MLB at Bat, CBS Radio News, iHeartRadio, Spotify, RDO, Stitcher. All of these are, are audio apps, whether they allow you to access podcasts or streaming music. Um, or different radio broadcasts around the country. Um, it's really about what 
internet-based app that you prefer in the vehicle. Um, Spotify is one of my favorite apps, so I'll launch Spotify just so you can see how it looks here in the vehicle. Um, so if you're familiar with Spotify, Spotify is a fairly visual app on your phone. It's got a lot of album art. Um, it's really meant to draw you in. In the vehicle, we took a different approach. We want it to be simple, easy access to get from point A to point B, and not necessarily draw the person into the screen, but give them the, the music content they want without making it look at the screen too much. So you can see here, with a couple clicks, I can access one of my playlists, um, and within three or four clicks, I'm playing a song. So actually, this is how we've worked with Spotify and Apple's work with Spotify to develop a version of this app that's compatible with the vehicle. Um, you'll see other apps like iHeartRadio, for example, follows a similar format, similar content. You can browse and see what radio stations may be available. And what's nice is I didn't necessarily have to close out of Spotify right there. As soon as I launched iHeartRadio, iHeartRadio started playing. So it's going to allow your latest music app to override the last one. The final main benefit for Apple CarPlay is navigation. A lot of people are familiar and comfortable with Apple Maps, and so now we've integrated Apple Maps here on the dashboard. Um, I can click on the Maps icon, and you'll see it's got the same format that you're used to using Apple Maps on your phone. Um, it's customized for the vehicle, though. It is here on our 8-inch touchscreen, and I can simply go to Destinations. If I has all my recent destinations that I've searched on here, or if I want to search a new one, where would you like to go? There is keyboard functionality, again, available when the vehicle's in park, not when it's in motion, or I can simply speak the destination. Where would you like to go? Take me to AT&T Park. Getting directions to AT&T Park. So it'll give me a couple route options on here based on quickest time and mileage. I'm gonna choose the shortest amount of time, which is 45 minutes. Starting route to AT&T Park. Head north on Zeitler Road. So it's going to give you a visual overlay and audio cues as well. Um, and you can zoom in and out using the zoom buttons. You can turn off the audio cues if you want, and you can get an overview of the full route. Head north on Zeitler Road. And that's essentially Apple CarPlay. Um, what's nice is that as Apple works with automakers to approve new apps in the vehicle, if you have those apps, they'll automatically appear here on CarPlay once they're approved, or you just have to download them and the next time you're in the car, you'll see it here on CarPlay. Um, it's great that you can access it in three ways. You can do the touch screen like I've been doing for the majority of this demo. You can access Siri by actually holding this button, or you can access Siri by holding the steering wheel button. What was the score of the Detroit Tigers game last night? The Tigers just barely lost to the Rangers yesterday. The final score was 7-6. to six. So Apple CarPlay is standard in the Chevy Volt. Um, it requires no extra cost to get the vehicle. If you have the Chevy MyLink infotainment system, which does come standard, you'll have the option for Apple CarPlay. Android Auto, for all you Android users, will be available starting in March of 2016. And the great news is that even if you buy a Volt today, you can bring that Volt into the dealership starting in March and they'll upgrade it to be Android Auto compatible. And that's essentially Apple CarPlay.